Florida State had its best season in a long time last year, but they were far from a perfect football team. Smack in the middle of the season, they dropped three straight to ACC opponents. And by the advanced metrics, their games at FSU would be unlikely to lose by season's end. Oftentimes losses tell you more about a team than wins. So I wanna put a magnifying glass to these performances to see what went wrong. Their first loss came at the hands of Wake Forest Demon Deacons to the tune of 31 to 21 at home. While the idea of giving up 31 points to Wake sounds like a ridiculous notion to FSU fans, I think the offense actually played the worst game. Wake had a really good offense last year, finishing with the 12th best offense according to F+, while averaging 36 points per game. So FSU actually held them under their season average. Their defense in comparison is much worse. On average, they held teams to only 28 points per game, a whole touchdown more than FSU's offense was able to score. So how do we explain this discrepancy? What did Wake Forest do to stifle FSU's generally dynamic offense? Let's start with the first play of the game. FSU wanted to challenge Wake over the top early with Johnny Wilson. Wake's corner does a good job of jamming him at the line and stopping this play before it starts. The next play shows the kind of coverage that Wake settled into for the remainder of the game. They're in a 4-2-5 and they're playing their nickel aligned almost as a true third safety. And actually they're playing all of their secondary back. Basically all game, they were content playing soft cover three and cover four zones. Clearly they know Norvell's tendency to go vertical and they were looking to stop that. FSU responds to that with an RPO slant that gets underneath that soft coverage for a chunk play. FSU then gets to the line and runs a quick running play on first for a decent gain. They go back to a slant to get into the end zone to cap off a nearly perfect opening drive. So what do we know about the different game plans from that drive? Well, we know that Wake is going to play soft in the secondary, FSU is looking to run on early downs, and if Wake plays straight up, they'll probably get run over. This is where the chess match begins. In the second drive, you can see how Wake wants to respond to this. On first down, their safety and linebacker respond quickly to the run to get FSU behind the chains. FSU draws up another little RPO to a dig downfield which looks to be open, but is blown up by a bad block and leads to the first true passing situation of the game. And now it's third down and FSU's injury considerations become relevant. FSU is on their third and fourth tackles and one of those is himself not quite 100%. Wake leverages this by playing their defensive ends in what's called a wide nine, which basically just means they play further outside and that allows them to speed rush around FSU's slower footed tackles. This means that they only have to bring three to generate a pass rush. It can leave eight in coverage. This is a recipe for disaster on third downs. So two drives down, and we know that Wake wants to shut down FSU's run early in order to force them into passing situations where they know they can generate a pass rush with only three. But FSU is one of the better running teams in the country. So there's no guarantee that they'll be able to consistently force those third and longs but they have another trick up their sleeves, which you can see on the first play of FSU's third drive. Wake originally presented FSU with their base alignment, a true 4-2-5, but they do something interesting here. Did you catch it? This little shift makes a big difference. It messes with the blocking angles on FSU's go-to run play, counter. And while this is a passing play, FSU is showing counter action in its blocking scheme with this pulling guard. We can see why this is effective a bit clearer on the blackboard. Against a traditional four down defense like Wake showed at the start of the play, the offensive line has pretty standard blocking assignments. Basically, all of the linemen block down on the first guy away from the play side, and the pulling guard comes around to clean up the unblocked end. The important thing are these blocking angles on the down block. In this front, it's set up so the guys that they have to block are perfectly positioned. They're slightly inside in order to get that angle while not being too far inside. Plus, the playside tackle isn't covered up by alignment, which allows them to work up field to open a larger gap at the point of attack. Now let's look after the shift. Now all the down blocks have moved further away. This makes it tougher to reach Wake's small but quick interior alignment. Not only that, but it widens the point of attack, so the playside tackle now has to engage with the defensive tackle instead of getting a free release up field. Finally, it takes away this tackle's blocking responsibility. You can see that on the play itself, he ends up blocking no one. This became a trend throughout the game. They gambled that FSU would try to run counter and that they could use this line shift to help them get stops on early downs. 
It also seems like they were able to get some good jumps on FSU's snap counts. Look how quickly this defensive tackle gets off the ball and into the backfield. These things were effective for Wake. In the first three quarters, FSU ran the ball on 21 of 38 first and second down snaps. Those plays went for a paltry 4.1 yards per play. So Wake's first goal of shutting down FSU's run game on early downs worked. Despite this, FSU was insistent on running the football. But what about the passing game? Remember how successful it was on those slants against Wake's off coverage in the first drive of the game? Well, they pretty much abandoned the short passing game. Jordan Travis only attempted eight passes all day to wide receivers on short to intermediate routes. On these attempts, he was eight for eight for 94 yards and 11.75 yards per attempt. Despite this, FSU still continued trying to push the ball downfield. Jordan Travis attempted more passes that traveled more than 15 yards downfield than he did short passes. And predictably, because of Wake's soft coverage, those didn't fare quite as well. Travis only completed three of those 12 attempts for 5.8 yards per attempt. The only time this trend really broke was the first drive of the second half. In this drive, they went to quick passes a few times to not just score early and get within striking distance of the Deeks, but they quickly abandoned it in order to reestablish the run. So this is the story of the game to me. Wake Forest knew that FSU wanted to run the ball on early downs to take vertical shots. So they ventured to take those things away by playing aggressively to the run while playing soft coverage and utilizing wide nines to take advantage of FSU's backup tackles. I think this is a great game plan against FSU. And they counted on the fact that Norvell wouldn't want to dink and dunk the passing game for a whole 60 minutes, and they were right. The only thing that stands out as odd to me is that Norvell usually has an answer to this kind of defense. Screens. He ran a couple of running back screens that couldn't get going, but he only went to a wide receiver screen twice all game, which is odd since they average over four a game. And it's not absurd for them to go to it a lot more often if they're getting good looks. Against Syracuse, they went to it 11 times, and I would argue that Wake was giving them good looks. Look how much room these receivers are given. On the two times they threw these receiver screens, they gained a total of 41 yards. Before it sounds like I'm too hard on FSU's play calling, I think we need context. FSU should have been able to run on Wake's light box, and it's hard to blame them for continuing to go to their best play, especially when they see little slivers of success like these plays here. But I think overall, it seems like FSU wasn't that willing to deviate from its bread and butter when it wasn't working. Also, there's the consideration that FSU is playing with an injured offensive line, which hampered both their run game and their passing game. But there may be times this season when FSU's line is similarly disadvantaged against better teams, even with a completely healthy offensive line. They did a good job of trying to address this issue by adding depth through the transfer portal, but I still question how the ceiling of this unit holds up if they're trying to compete on the biggest stage. To me, the big question will be how they adapt in-game if that happens. Will they stick staunchly to their game plan, or will they be willing to take what the defense gives them? Perfect. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on both the format and content of this video in the comments below. I plan on moving to the offense's performance against NC State in the next video. So make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and the Knowles 247 channel so you don't miss a thing. Thanks.